Welcome, everyone. Uh, real quick, Jacob's got a story. So, did you show this last podcast at all? I don't think you did. No, I didn't. It was when we talked about our Christmas little thing yeah. or whatever. So, when um, we last talked about it. Right here, if you see above me, um, I got for uh, Christmas, my brother, he got me a um, Breath of the Wild like bow and arrow. And it's really cool. It lights up. Um, it's like super to scale. It feels really nice. Um, I got it out of the box and I was like messing with it. And I pulled it back, and as I was like, I was I didn't like pull it back, but as I was holding it, like you would hold a traditional bow, the back end, if you see, look up there, the back end of it <laughs> snapped, and I was like, that is so crappy. Well, and Travis had a good comment. Well, yeah, it's that's that's an authentic Breath of the Wild, the because yeah. it broke. It really, yeah, it really. So it's time is. to pe- buy another hundred twenty whatever that was dollar one. So. Well, I tried um. I tried taping it. <laughs> that's, not that a, it that's not a defect. That's a feature. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's definitely a feature. Uh, it's it's true to the T. Now it's climb really up your walls and grab it and bring it back down. Are you sure you didn't break it pumping iron? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> but that'd be funny, too, wouldn't it? Be? I love your wall right now. That It's like a Breath of the Wild broken thing, <laughs> an earthbound poster, and a set of weights, and a dog. Hey, this is a hundred percent like that is the most Jacob room I've ever seen. This is my this is my hobby room. Like it a hundred percent is. My guitars are on the wall. I got my books next to me. Like this is a hundred. That is the man cave. It's a hobby room. Well, a hobby room. I think we're all in a hobby room. I think we all are in our own little hobby rooms. Yeah. No, kind of what you know. That's just kind of what life is. You just spend some time in your hobby room. Is a hobby room. Under COVID, at least, that's what you spend a lot of time Yeah, on. you spend it all in the hobby room. So, welcome to the Dwee Bros podcast, where we talk about Breath of the Wild artifacts. Where we talk about movie artifacts, TV shows, scripts, and more. I am your host, Zach, joined by Link himself, Jacob. Hi, yeah. And Travis. In his hobby room, live. What's happening, everybody? And new camera, new camera. It looks nice. Thank you. And better than my uh, fish islands. We were. Uh, hack so, I want to say that we were so close. We were about to be interviewed by Larry King on Larry King Live, He's and there. we just <laughs> missed it. I rest in peace to Larry King. His his last. His last um, guest was going to be Yikes. was going to be the Joy Bros, and we I just I can't it. I can't say anything. we just missed it. So Dude. I feel super uneasy right now. So um, whatever celebrity he got last, that he missed out on us. So that's that's a way to start a podcast. Yeah. So <laughs> oh man, oh. So what, well, do you, so what do you got? What, what's been going on with you guys? Let's get an update. Let's let's read the pulse of the Dwee Bros. What's been going on in your lives? The pulse? The what pulse. pulse. The pulse. The um, pulse. The pulse. The election pulse. ended. <laughs> <laughs> Life's good. Nothing's changed. I mean, it's like, what else can I really say? I mean, COVID's still a thing. I, I still look back to the podcast that we said, like, this will blow over. Um, here we are now. I didn't and, say that. Yeah, I didn't say that. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, here we are in January, and um, yeah, we're blown over all This right? makes the year anniversary of when I said that this is going to be okay. Yeah, I think I was making joke jokes this time last year about a plague a plague tale. So yeah. A plague tale, and that was happening. I was like, yeah, you know, just like Corona. Yeah. And we were laughing. Yeah, actually. Uh, and good in... Uh, good updates about COVID. I know several people that have actually gotten the first round of the vaccine. So there's yeah. currently my wife got a shot. Yeah, there's nice. there's, there's currently uh, the you got to get the two rounds, and uh, I know people that got the first round. So I think it's kind of like um, it's kind of like a video game. This vaccine because you have to get it. To, you have to get both rounds. Yeah. To get the the immunity on this thing. If you get the well, first round, I was I was hearing that it's like fifty or sixty percent, like yeah. it helps, right? So yeah. you get like a half buff, and then you get the full buff um, once you get the full vaccine. So oh, uh, I know a lot of people with the half buff, but I'm still running naked basically in cyberpunk right now. I, yeah, in destiny thing. terms, you and I we do not have the buff, and uh, yeah. we need the people with the buff to 
you know, hurry yeah. it up so that my, we don't my only die. buff is the is the buff is the is the shield you get to be in the game that's wooden and catch on fire. And that's the mask. Yeah, I'm that's all I have. Blown away! I'm blown away. I have not caught it yet. I'm blown away by it. Are you are you like on a speed run for it or what are you doing here? No, no, I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't want to get people yeah. sick. I don't want to get sick. Yeah. But I think the the thing that's just funny to me is like I'm. I, I work. I'm a social worker. I work in all these schools. Yeah. I travel to like five, six schools a day. Um, I'm at a lot of different places. I'm really, really active. Yeah. I mean, I wear my mask. You're a super spreader, Jacob. No, I am. I, I, yeah, but what's right. crazy is people that are like hyper careful are still catching this thing. So, like, I've heard yeah. stories. People like, I did all this. I made sure not to be without my mask and whatever. Well, you know what? You know what's catching on out there? You know what's catching on? What's catching on? This little series, it's kind of like the coronavirus. Well, no, it's not like the coronavirus. It's biohazard, a.k.a. Resident Evil. Oh, there is a new plague. That's right. a new there plague. is a new plague on the way. Yeah. Resident Evil 8. You I know what? I bet they were... Coronavirus, whatever I have to do to segue out of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I don't want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> if you guys haven't yet, uh, our boy, Scaredy Pants Dweebo, actually streamed the demo. Yeah, I watched. Uh, I watched panel. you do that after I played it. I watched that. It was very funny. Yes, very funny. Uh, I, I like when a person plays a game like this, and then gets mad when they can't figure out where to go because eighteen <laughs> different times as you're playing that, a little X pops up on the screen. Like, where you're supposed to click? But because you're doing this, you yeah, I can't see, see it. I, I can't see the middle. <laughs> yeah, I basically that that app, I was seeing that was taking people twenty minutes or less to complete that demo because I've seen people online like oh it's only twenty minutes or so. That Let me took, give you a trick. That took me, me forty or forty five minutes because I was doing the the no look run. It took me about twenty minutes. Here's what I was gonna say. Let me give you a tip, and I think if you internalize this, you can play scary games like that. I don't play it like thinking like I'm the person. I play it thinking. If I was making this level, when would I pace the scares? So as I'm playing, I'm having a good time. Like I'm immersed in the atmosphere. But like when I grab like the the bolt cutters, I'm like, okay, this is going to make me feel safe because I have a tool now. I know that they know that. So they're about to do something. And then you know that it's going to happen. And it's not as scary because you know like – they just gave you because these games they're never going to constantly scare you they're gonna mm -hmm. they're gonna pace it they're gonna wait till you get something that's what or I you hate. learn something or you're doubling back to go somewhere and that's when they'll do it and so i play those games constantly like a cat and mouse game in my mind of like what are they going to try to do to me now you know so, so with that any helps game me a lot. that even a game that's not scary or a movie or tv show i lose myself in it to the point yeah. where I almost become like a gullible, like every trick will almost work on me. And if it doesn't, you've really fricked up. That's where I can tell if something's bad or I don't like it. Zach, you never talk about plot holes ever. Yeah, because... And I'm the same way, like, yeah, it's I like, like a magic trick. It's not fun to stare at the plot hole. But if you see a magician put the card in his pocket, yeah. he really failed. Yes. Like, he really failed. Same way with games and movies, I get, I yes. get that. So I, yeah. I let myself lose, and that is dangerous when it comes to horror games because I'm locked in and I'm there. So I am ter I am like sweating palms watching this stuff. But, yeah, you can check that on the channel. I did a 40-minute little hangout on uh, the peeking through my fingers run is what I'm calling it. And I am the current world record holder of not looking at that. But I, I gotta what do you guys think? Really like what do you think of the demo? I really like the demo. I my experience with the series is I played four and I love that game, and then I played a little bit of one and I liked it, but I didn't finish it. And then I've watched videos about them and stuff, but um, I like the I like the vibe of Resident Evil Four more than the other games. Um, I got Resident Evil Two over there. I've just never played it. Um, the remake. I just to me, I don't know. Like I just. I don't like the first person, uh, like kind of slaughterhouse, like Hills Have Eyes vibe of Resident yeah. Evil 7. I thought 7 might be the one I'd get into. I played the demo of 7, which is a really similar demo to the demo for 8. Like you start in like a basement and then you go upstairs and then you look around the house and then you go upstairs and you get a key and then you come downstairs and you go to leave and then a bad guy stops you. Like yeah. that is the plot of both of those demos. Same length, same gameplay. Everything is the same between Resident Evil 7 demo and Resident Evil 8 demo. But I walked away from the 7 demo like, I don't want to play this. 
because of the atmosphere and because of the setting. It was like the bat bayou, like southern, like I'm gonna get you, man, and like I, eating bugs. Yeah, it just is really gross. Not I that like it. stuff in eight wasn't gross, but eight was more like Bram Stoker, Stoker's like Dracula, like these big yeah. ornate elaborate castles. And then when you're in the basement, even though it's gross. It reminded me of when you go to the, when we go to the, our local Renaissance fair that we have around here. We go every year when there's not a pandemic, and uh, we went like every year. And they have like this torture place you can go in, and they've got all the torture things set up. And it's meant to be scary, and it is disturbing, but it's also kind of funny because it's like really like crap. It's not crappy, but it's hokey the way it's yeah, set up. It's, it's hokey. But walking around that basement reminded me of that. Of like this is like all those torture devices and the cages you put on people and. And I don't know, because it feels a little like fantasy or like a little bit like old timey, it felt it just I don't want to say more inviting, but it didn't feel as gross in a weird way. Like it felt more like I was enjoying a piece of fiction than I got abducted by Jethro down the street and he shoved me in a shed and he's like beat me with a hammer. I don't know, like the stuff in Resident Evil 7 just doesn't do it for me atmosphere wise, whereas 8 really does that castle. So this is only on PS5. That the graphics in that castle, that place looks amazing. Yeah. It's like locked 60 frames. It's a native 4K. It's got ray tracing. I was watching online. It has ray tracing enabled. Yeah. That game looks amazing. Now, it looks now, better a, than that. We finally surpassed the pre rendered backgrounds. It's of not the first a PS5 Resident or Xbox Series game. It's an Xbox One and PS4 game, right? I think. Cross gen. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I I uh, I don't think I'll play it because for me uh, I admired everything you just said. Yeah, like uh, that setting and stuff is way cooler than I. That's more my speed too, because I I Resident Evil Four I could play, I could like Should play. I could Should play. I could play that style of like over the shoulder and that was creepy at times but it wasn't like i wanted to like i'm peeking through it's my like fingers an, and it has like an action espionage it's, tilt to it like you're action. like a spy guy and you're you can do like a roundhouse kick and it's stuff. more action yeah. whereas seven is deep horror it's fps stuff's jumping out at you it's like very scary and i think eight is more around that um that's the best part of the series though I yeah if, that, if I don't, but i can't I don't take, take it but, i don't take to the action as much as like as it is like the story and also on top of that like the horror of it that's what makes it fun to me um, resident evil is a fascinating franchise because it's so like it's done so many things so successfully that like to me i love four like i love four like i love that japanese horror action like on a big adventure like that game resident evil 4 turns into a metal gear game like by the halfway point like you are fighting these like really unique bosses and you're talking on the codec with like a dwarf as you're going through his castle like you'll never get all the way through my castle i won't let you like it's just that game is just a whole vibe yeah. that is different than it's more they goofy, scary the and... three times. they did the fixed perspective survival horror then they did the japanese horror you know suspense action thing for three games and now i'm very convinced they're in this first person very atmospheric, very your boots in your person in this scary yeah. place trilogy. Sorry, Jacob, I cut you off, but like it's just fascinating to me that they've reinvented themselves so much that what is good Resident Evil? I know people who love six because it takes that action espionage. That game isn't even scary. That game just goes full yeah. like Avengers. You play as everybody in all the games and you like every it's like Metal Gear Solid 4. Like it's just a total crazy game. But Sorry, you were saying you, no. you really like this new style. Yeah, I, I like the new style. I mean, I love 2 and 2 and 3 were great. Like, they're really good remakes. I really like the third-person idea. Um, but then when, like, I, I never played 4, and I'm not going to play the old one. I'm going to wait for the remake to come out because it's, it's inevitable. Um, I, I think it's something I'll look at in two to three years. It will happen, um, and then I'll play 4. But right now, I love 7. Um, 7 was absolute joy. Uh, I'm probably going to replay it now that it's free on the PS5. I'll probably replay it as well. And then uh, eight's a day one for seven's me. free on PSN right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Seven is free on PlayStation Network. Remember, it's part of the PlayStation package. If you have PS Five. Is it really? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, the PlayStation family thing. Yep. I Maybe I will play through it because I got some people hounding me, even though I don't like the atmosphere. It's a good. I'm telling you, it is a good game. It's is it under ten hours? No, no. 
That's my rule with really scary games is if I can't get through it in 10 hours, 10 hours, I don't want to do it because I double check. if I can do it in four sessions or so, like it's worth it. You know, you're, you're looking anywhere between 10 to 15. Okay. That's not question, terrible. Question. What did uh, you say, Zach? Sorry, that's pushing it on his scale. I mean, that's not. I mean, that's really close to a scale. At eleven, that's he's going to be saying, "Wrap it up." I mean, Dead Space. Dead Space ended up being a little bit longer than I planned on, and it was worth it. That game was awesome. But I will say this: Resident Evil Seven, towards the end, it definitely the changes pace. Uh, you 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 can tell. Um, in the beginning, it's... you definitely get the. But it's like any game you play. Like you play Demon Souls. At first, you're timid. Then you learn what to do, and then you kind of get over it. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things that That's how Evil Within time. was. Evil Within 2 was very scary, like the first two chapters. That game is 17 chapters long. Like it's oh, not man. every chapter is not the same length, but after th- four, five, six chapters, I learned how it worked and it wasn't as scary. That's yeah. been you're right. That's been my experience too. I've never played a game that scared me the whole time. Yeah. It's scary until you know what it's a that's a really good analogy of like Dark Souls. Demon Souls, you get a vibe for what you're doing, and then it's still hard, but it's more like you're into the mechanics and how to play it. Yeah, I think, it's something, I think you guys would enjoy it, Zach. I, you wouldn't. I, I just know your personality. But um, Travis, I, I'm surprised you haven't played it yet. I might, I might play it this year. I mean, one uh, day. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it makes sense if I was going to play eight, which I, I that's what I was going to say. I think I'm going to play eight. I think this demo sold me on it, so maybe I will play seven. I remember though the other thing I was going to say. I remember when Seven like first premiered. I watched that the other day, actually, when we watched the premiere of it. I thought that game looked like real life, and now like that I'm seeing Eight, and I go back and I look at footage of Seven. I'm like, man, that game did not have the image quality that we have now. Graphics have subtly taken a crazy leap in the last three years. I think it's ray tracing. Ray tracing yeah. is a is a landing on the moon kind of moment for graphics. Yeah, it yeah, really actually, is. Let me- let me throw this out there then, because this is one of the games I played. Uh, Quake 2 RTX. So uh, NVIDIA and Microsoft partnered with somebody to basically take Quake 2, which is like the shooter from the 90s, and put ray tracing in it. <laughs> and uh, I streamed that this week or last week on the channel. Uh, that game, it just looks awesome. Like the you hit the nail on the head. It's like a landing on the moon moment. It it transforms how all the textures interact with light in a way that it looks modern. Yeah. Like I think that we're going to start seeing a lot more remasters and remakes implement ray tracing because that is like a whole new frontier. It makes everything look so much better. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen Minecraft with ray tracing. It looks unbelievable. Yeah. It looks so unbelievable. We, yeah. Every texture and everything is interacting with how the light is. So it actually, it's more, it gives that one extra tier of like, realism so to yeah. the point that even when i go back and look at games i think red dead looks amazing i'm not taking anything away from red dead but now when i watch footage of red dead that's different than it running natively in front of me but when i watch high quality youtube videos i think like you know the lighting does kind of look dated not that the art direction around the lighting is good like the sunsets and stuff that also looks immaculate but the actual way that the lighting works looks dated now yeah it's crazy you it's all we're all going to be buying hd remasters of ps4 games with ray tracing and yeah we are yeah we are it's well said <laughs> but uh something else that has ray tracing that's i think the most impressive i've seen yet is cyberpunk and there's a new patch i think we've played some more of that uh i, I stream i didn't install the new patch yet because i saw it was game breaking things around one quest and it's the actual quest i'm on it's a oh, quest you're past okay there's a quest called down on the street <laughs> there's a quest called down on the street where you meet up with takimura okay. or he calls you okay and it's literally the next quest i'm gonna do oh, and wow. i just saw this thing i'm glad i looked it up people were like this patch breaks your game if you're on this quest oh, and i looked gosh. up it is the of, of the 300 quests in that game it is the story quest i'm on and so until i see like Everybody come out and say it is not broken anymore. I'm not touching that game, yeah. game at all because I do not want to break my save. Yeah, I I think for some people it's been <clears throat> like it's helped on some things because it has fixed some things. But other people, including myself, I still kind of have some of the same issues. One bug that I keep getting is when I get out of uh, like a car or a, a vehicle, I'm zoomed in. And I'm like walking slow, and I have to hit the L button to like come back out to unglitch it. 
That happens to me too. That happens to me all the time. Um, that happens to me. I've got stuff now, where are stuff... you using the FOV slider? Yeah. Yeah, I do too. And it, so what it's doing is, is you're getting out of the car and it's giving you the original FOV. Oh, okay. And so you have to hit L and then it puts you back to the FOV you set. Cool. I don't know why it does that, but I had the same issue. Yeah. Glad that's still in there on the 1.1 major patch, but... Um, well, this patch, what they said was the press release said. Yeah, they said there's going to be another one in February. Is so. more foundational. This, I think, what this patch was is, this is the one where they go up and like all the string, you know, duct tape code they had to do just to get it shipped. I think they went back and re-engineered some of that stuff to give a better foundation to work on. This is like the COVID vaccine, the part one before they get to yes. part two. So you're yeah, not totally you immune to the it, bugs. But um, if we get the second one and it's still the same problems, I mean, yeah. that might be So I'm playing some more since I got that patch. <laughs> I'm still running into really weird bugs and stuff. Um, they're like, come on, like, what are we doing here? But I'm still having fun. I'm still, uh, the story oh, is really still really good. good, and the stuff that you're doing is really crazy that I'm doing right now, and the story is, is really cool. But, um, yeah, Cyberpunk, Let's and we'll just keep updating to see when this game gets all the way fixed i I will say i like i I love the game i think it's a great game even with all the issues on pc it's a great game uh but all of the negativity around it has definitely dampened my enthusiasm for it not like i think it's a bad game but it's hard for me the same thing happens sometimes with destiny where if i really like am enjoying destiny and then the community starts to get really negative on stuff I can like push that stuff out to a certain extent, but once it reaches a certain point, it's like, God, like you almost just don't even want to like bother, you know, it's kind of a weird thing that I have. I don't know if anybody else is ever that way, but I've just been kind of taking a break because you're letting, you're letting the haters get to you. Never be normal. You're letting I, the haters get to you. Yeah. I think that's what it is. So every time I boot it up, I said, don't hate the player, hate the game. And then I get hit with bugs. And I hate the game. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's good, but bad as well. Um, yeah. That's Cyberpunk. What else you guys been playing? Um, yeah, I, I'll go for it. I've only played one game, really. Um, I know me and Zach played a game. Of, well, we'll talk about the one we played. Yeah, let's talk stream. about it. We streamed, we, pl- we streamed the entirety. Didn't we stream the entirety? The of, entirety of A Way Out. A Way Out. What a good time. Like, An amazing you know, time. You can just scrub through, check out. There are some uh, highlights I put up in arm wrestling that me and Jacob got into. Uh, the yep. game legit is just peppered with things to screw around with with the other person. Yeah. So the it, the arm wrestling thing, you each had to press A, and whoever tapped the fastest, that's who like you got to see the arm go down, and the thing tapped more. So we did that for like three and a half minutes. The video right. is three and a half minutes and of me and Jacob fighting. We can't. Our prides are like our pride is like fighting against each other. So I, it hurt, dude. I was like, I was tapping. I, I kept having to change my hand around but as I was going. That is one of the best co-op experiences I've ever had in a video game. Uh, yeah. The ending. Because I think we even we you had a theory about what was going on. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, that's probably what they're gonna do. Like you start to go yeah. along, you're like, ah, I get it. This ending is like that's all. The, this is what this ending should have been, and it's awesome. Like I've I was totally fulfilled. It's one of my favorite blew, video game endings of all time. Blew my mind. Like game wise really? and implementing like games and what like co op stuff, like how your the play like element of that. Huh. Best ending. The last one of the best endings. of the game was a joyride. Yes, I mean, really? Yeah, it yeah. was absolutely, positively. Um, yeah, fantastic. I need to finally get around to playing this, and I want to play it with somebody else, kind of like you guys did. Neither one of you had played it, right? Yeah, no. none of us. I want to. I think I should play it because I talked about to Zach Campbell about playing it, and nothing against him. I mean, I like playing games with him, but he's played it already. Yeah. I feel like that's probably an important thing is just play it totally fresh, no idea what's going to happen, and just kind of like yeah. bounce around and see what's going to... Well, what was awesome is that I only, I was the only one that owned the game, and me and Zach just play off the same game I had. So it was kind of really convenient. Like, you could split it with somebody. It makes it a lot cheaper. Yeah. Um, but, man, and, and we didn't really have very many issues. Towards the end, we had some, like, internet issues. It might have been on my side. I don't yeah. know. Um, but I will say this, man. The ending... Just, Ah, really that good yeah yeah it's like i was just wow. smiling the whole time it, and what it just, they, i did not see it yeah 
and, and that, I think this me. this cemented because you already liked Brothers, which is his other game. Oh yeah, Brothers is a fantastic Joseph game. Ferris is the director's name, and I forgot the studio's yeah. name, but he did Brothers, and that was its gimmick was use the two analog sticks to control each brother. This gimmick is hey. You can see the other person playing that split screen, and you might be in the scene in the background doing something, or like you have to interact. But like seeing that and like move, so he would be in a cutscene, and I'd be doing something, and like that yeah. element of b- bouncing back and forth and stuff was so fun and so cool and so well implemented that his next game is called It Takes Two, yeah. and the premise of that is that you are like a like a married couple that's having like mirror like marriage issues. And you get turned into puppets, and now you have to yeah. like get out of that or something. But it's yeah. similar to that split screen thing, and I'm, I'm excited to see what he does with that. So, yeah, a way out. Well, I mean, he's two for two then, because uh, mm-hmm. Brothers is fantastic. So. Yeah, definitely yeah. recommended. Um, Brothers had a thing at the end where, have you guys both played Brothers? I have. Um, you, what you said was yeah, like you eat, you control each brother with a stick, mm-hmm. and something happens in the story of that game. Where you feel the impact emotionally from the visuals and the music yeah. and what just happens at the end and leading up to the end, but they tie that into the gameplay yeah. in a way that you like naturally go to do something and you're like, oh, I can't do that now. Yeah. Like that just like it, it's I still go back to that as it's that and Fez, the discovery that you can you're doing this normal 2D thing with these thumbs and then it's like, oh, I can use the triggers to change yeah. perspective. Like those two, especially the brothers one, because it's the end of the game. I'm like, I'm all for that. That's when I realized you can tell story within games, but to really make it count, the story beats have to directly tie to the mechanics. Because yeah. when you play a game, you drill into the mechanics that you're doing. And so when you can disrupt those mechanics and if the player feels that disruption and you can tie that disruption to a disruption narratively, like that is where I think game storytelling is at its strongest yeah. and i just can't think of a ton of times that that happens in games yeah most games you just get the story beats at the end through visual audio you don't mm. get it from mechanics yeah but, yeah but a way yeah, out definitely absolutely recommended very good I, the only other game i've really played by myself um i played i think a couple times with travis and you um which was call of duty cold war um i probably have now about two days worth of game time in it um so nice. it's it's yeah it's quickly right I, it's I'm full on 2013 Jacob See, again. Um, I feel like that's a good one of those. I was listening to some like end of year recap stuff and I felt like there were a lot of haters towards Black Ops like out in the realm of like journalism, media, games coverage. Like I guess a lot of people just really like Modern Warfare and Warzone. I think but... it plays different. I was seeing some little clips of how it plays different. Okay. I didn't give a frick. I never Warzone, give a frick about that. But Warzone's I'm not... a little yeah. bit slower paced, believe it or not. Um, where and it's all, the weapons are also tiered differently, and they do different things with like the, yeah. the, the statistics of the weapons. Where this one is a little bit quicker paced, um, and you kind of find yourself finding like you don't have all the high tech gadgets that you would have. You don't have the heartbeat sensors. You don't have that kind of stuff that. People just really enjoy about the game. Yeah. I, I'm a sucker to put me on hardcore search and destroy, put me on hardcore domination where it's two shot dead, like you don't yeah. help doesn't come back. I'm a sucker for those game modes. Yeah. Because it's a sense of realism in the war setting, but also on top of that, it's a sense of skill. Like, hey, who pulls the trigger quicker? It doesn't matter how much better of a gun. If I have a pistol and you have a shotgun, guess yeah. what? Who's closer? Who's farther away? And who's a better shot? That's what, yeah. hey, that's what life comes down to. Like, maybe, I'm missing, maybe I'm missing something. I never bought Modern Warfare, um, but I played Warzone. It was fine. Like, it was fun. Don't get me wrong. It was good. It wasn't worth 180 gigs on my hard drive, so I got rid of it after, like, three times playing it. But I actually had to do a lot of getting rid of stuff off my hard drive this past week because, as I'll talk about in a minute, I've been playing a, a trilogy of games that is kind of a juggling <laughs> act to figure out what you need installed and what you don't need installed. Um, so I've been hurting for space, but I will tell you as I go through my, my GOG and I look at what I've installed, I don't even reach for call of duty to uninstall it. Cause I've had such a good time playing it with you guys yeah. and I keep it on in case you guys are free and want to play. But like, I actually the other day was like, the other day I was like, I don't know. I haven't played a lot of destiny lately. Like I'm sure I'll come back to that, but, I would probably uninstall that before I would uninstall Call of Duty right now because 
you know, it's, it's just a really solid shooter. It's just me really and, good. Uh, me and a couple friends, we sat down and played zombies the other day, four-person zombies, and it was phenomenal. It was such a great time. We got to like round 41, which is the highest I've gotten. Um, 41 is pretty high. It's about three and a half hours worth of gameplay. Um, but it was a great time. It was challenging. It was frustrating. But it was so rewarding, and that's what I want. That's why I want to have a good zombies experience. Did you play four hours continuous, like, on the zombies mode? Yeah. Like, dying and then playing again? or yeah. like? Well, I mean, if you got revived. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So without, like, losing, losing, you played for... Yeah, we, we all did not get wiped. Now, oh there was gosh. times when I was the only one left, or there was times when, like, another friend was the only one person left, but they would pull off either the, they'd kill all the zombies in the yeah. round or they'd revive Is them. there any, like, mini breaks or something? Uh, you get, like, a 10-second break in between rounds. Jeez. Yeah, but, like, if you're the party host, you can pause and everyone can take, stand up and take a break. Oh, okay, okay. Episode. You know, those kind of Wow, things, you can but, pause um, on that, but you can't pause them in the Souls games. Wow. Yeah, weird, right? <laughs> So it was a good time. Um, I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm sure I'm gonna end up getting the three to four days worth of gameplay on it. Um, and that's just where. Speaking it is of right three now. or four days in gameplay, when I start up Cyberpunk and Travis had this glitch as well. When you quit the game, the game does not quit sometimes, and it will just keep running. So on my um, it shows the time I've played on my God Galaxy or whatever. Uh, two hundred hours I put into. Man, you are invested. But I, that's not I, true at all. I have an I have an irrational anger about those track. I think tracking the time you play games is awesome. Yeah, but, but so work, many times on Steam that has burned me, and now same thing happened to me. I have like thirty phantom hours on Cyberpunk. I like keeping track of how much I played something. Yeah, I hate. When that happens in the game, you shut it down or it doesn't shut down all the way. Cyberpunk, like one time I left um, Divinity Original Sin 2 running on a, for, a, for, for a whole weekend on accident. So I played that game 10 hours. I have 87 hours on that. Yeah. It's like my second most played game. I wish you it could like... Bother me. It shouldn't bother me. It's That's a good game. But like now people will look and be like, oh, he really likes that game. It's like, no, fucking no. I don't even play that game. I don't know anything about it. You, but you should set an appeal. Like you it. should be able to appeal like, cut down my hours. This isn't yeah. real. You yeah, like I should be able to flag my activity and be like, hey, you know, Gabe you know, Null shut this down. Yeah. at steam.com. Gabe, can you cut my hours? <laughs> Please. Uh, All right, let's talk about a game that I don't have to worry about them cutting my hours for because it's that good. What is it? Dying Light. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hitman. Hitman. We're going to talk about Hitman right now. You've been Back dying to talk about Hitman. Everybody, lock in. I'm about to go on a soliloquy about Hitman. Hitman is a freaking masterpiece. That game and then going into the second one and gearing up for the third one, uh, those games are phenomenal and i've heard people saying that like for the last few years and i'm like yeah i get it like you know it's funny like you sneak around and you kill people like that's cool like um those games are worth all the hype that they get 100 percent of the hype that they get um they are so lean and focused at what they do really well um they don't bog you down with a bunch of story that's not necessary the story is extremely efficient and it's compelling but it's like literally a scene in between each mission. So they do not like, and when you're in the missions, there are no like cut scenes. There's no like bull crap. You don't be like, oh, okay, I've seen this and I got to do this. Like you're just in the game. You're in the sandbox. And that's the best way I can describe these games are they put you in a sandbox. And the closest thing I can describe it to is Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. When you chopper into Camp Omega, you have like a main objective. Your main objective is to go and save pause. And I think you got to kill another guy, but I don't know. You basically, it's like a rescue mission. Yeah. And you go, you get her, and then you exfiltrate on the beach. But everything else is your decision, right? There's a whole camp. There's like a prisoner area. There's like an office area. There's a, you know, military areas. And you have to decide how am I going to navigate this sandbox or that objective and then get out. So you're building a plan in your head. And so what Hitman has done is in the first game, there's six. 
In the second game, there's five, and then with some DLC, and then in the third game, there's another set of six. Each each stage, they basically set up a Camp Omega level of detail sandbox for you to go in, and the story will be like, hey, there's these three targets, or these two targets, or this two targets, and you also have to go destroy this virus in the underground lab. Like They'll give you objectives. Everything else is your decision. And it's not a stealth game the same way that um, Metal Gear is, where Metal Gear is like an action, like a like a military stealth. So like you're sneaking and you're you know you're you're you know you're shooting real fast and you're like you're you know fultoning people out. Hitman is like a social stealth game. So what's amazing is is none of those games are army bases. Every single one of those stages is a unique setup. So one is a fashion show in Paris where there's an auction going on upstairs, right? And one of your people is running the fashion show and one of the people you have to kill is running the auction. And so you can go about that a billion different ways. There are so many different ways and they set it up in the game. They have these pre kind of determined paths. You can get a little breadcrumb and be like, oh, this guy's talking about this. There's a meeting going on over there. I'm going to start going over that way. And then you'll start doing that and you'll knock out a guy and put on the thing you need to wear to go to the meeting. But then you'll see something else and you'll be like, do I stay going to this meeting or do I go up there real fast? Because now I can actually get to this other target. So you're constantly reevaluating your plans. And the, when you finish a mission, the first thing you kind of want to go do is go do the mission again, but do those other things. And that's where ground zeros had all those other things you yeah. can do. You know, they, you could get 20 hours of gameplay out of just that one map and ground zeros. And that is the way that this is. And they're genius because you have your story mission there with each one of them, like, there's probably each level has like 80 or 90 different little micro challenges you can get and you level up as you get those challenges. Each location map has mastery. So one through 20, you level up on the map mm-hmm. and that unlocks new starting locations on the map that unlocks new items on the map. And then you can also do these things called escalations where first time you kill them, it's like you can do it in any costume in any way with any item. But then like the first escalation might be like, you need to use a butcher knife and you have to be wearing, you know, a certain outfit. And so there's all these challenges that stack up and I have engaged with maybe 1% of all of that, but I have gotten just playing through the story. And then because I have wanted to go back and do certain things, I have played like an extra 10 hours on top of what I even need to try and just gear up for playing Hitman three. And it really is, it's a social stealth game. So you, instead of looking around, like where are the barrels I can hide behind? There's a little bit of that because you can crouch and you can sneak around. It's a lot more like, okay, my target is in within this zone, which is inside of this zone, which is inside this zone. Okay. So I know that if I put on a housekeeping outfit in this hotel, I can get like in here, but I can't get up here. But if I put on a housekeeping outfit, I can pretend to mop this floor for a second and then I can climb up this pipe. And then, okay, now I'm up here. If I can put on a guard outfit, I can get a little bit closer. And you're constantly like thinking through. And then while you're doing that normal way of doing it, you might hear about something and, Oh, He's about to have a golf lesson. Wait a minute. The golf instructor's over there. Wait, his bag is over here. Wait, I have explosives. I put explosives on his golf ball. He starts giving the guy golf balls on his golf lesson. The fourth ball, boom, he explodes. Like he blows up. Yeah. And they literally just have this sandbox of different things you can figure out and try. So, That's cool. So um, you uh, uh, you yeah. played one, and have you played the yeah. second game yet? Or Yeah, yet? so I, I, I beat one. I played... I played all six levels in one and I did the DLC. And then in these games, you can, you can basically import all the levels into the next game. So then I opened up two like and I downloaded two with death. What's that? It's like it rock, rock band, band with death. Oh, with death. It is. It's like rock band. So then I loaded in all my maps for Hitman one into Hitman two, and it has all the graphics upgrades. You can use the new items in those maps. Um, and so I just beat Hitman two last night. I have one more of the DLC maps which is cool. It's like on like a beach reservation area. So the last one I did, like, let me give you the scenarios just real fast because I have to. The variety is what makes this game awesome. There's a fashion show in Paris. Yeah. Then you go to Italy Sapienza where you're like on like this like really nice like coastal city and there's like an underground bond lab where they're making a virus. Then you go to Marrakesh, which is like in the Middle East and there's like a riot happening because a Swiss banker pissed these people off. So you have to kill a military general and you also have to kill this Swiss banker. And I literally went in as one of the people interviewing and I put a bomb on the camera and blew him up during the interview. And then the next one, Colorado, you go to like a little like militia compound in Colorado 
Then you go to uh, Hokkaido, Japan, and you Wait, go. Wait, when you blow that guy light. up, did you say we got the shot? Yeah, no, that's the other thing. This game has a great sense of humor. <laughs> Agent Forty Seven. There's always these little one-liners before you. If you're doing one of the little missions where you can kill him like in this pre-scripted way, there's always these little things like, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of an example. He always has these one-liners when he's talking to the people. Oh, I did a bank. I did a bank heist, and part of the bank heist was I had to kill the lady, the CEO of the bank. So I found out that they were firing this guy, and he had to go for an exit interview with the CEO. So I found this guy in the back. And you put a bomb crying. in his bag. He was crying, and I knocked him out, and I put on his clothes, and I went up there for the interview, and I sit down, and I'm like, this ball – this is so absurd. I'm this bald man with yeah. a barcode on the back of his head and this sweater vest. And she's like, let's have a conversation. She's like, I, we're letting you go today. And, and, and uh, age of 47 is just like, this isn't my first termination. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's got all these great one-liners, all the scenarios, like there's a Formula One race. There's just so many different scenarios. Like there's a level, it turns into Metal Gear Solid 3. You're in the jungle and you're sneaking through grass and like you're like going in these like drug cartel things. I I could gush about this game forever, so I'll stop talking in the interest of time. But um, I think that, Jacob, I saw you played a little bit of the first one. That's why I texted you the other day and asked how you liked it because for you, it's got you can be chaotic as you want, right? Yeah, like, which, which I have done. I have done my yeah. fair share of MP5, run through, just start shooting people, see what yeah. happens. Yeah, like, and I this is a game I brought my wife down here and I was like, watch me play this game for a little bit. And we were having fun because, like, I was doing the Paris mission and I, it was like a Christmas version of it where you could dress up as Santa Claus. But, like, I'm going around and, like, this guy sees me and I panic and I run and then I jump up on the stage. Like, Everybody get on the ground. I start shooting the ceiling. <laughs> Everybody starts running out and, like, you can be chaotic or like Zach, I think you would love it because you can be super sneaky and suave and like get the right costumes. And, and what's the great thing is, is if it's a game that you just want to play through the story, you can beat the story of either of those games in seven hours. But also there are hundreds of hours of just perfecting the levels and learning everything and doing all the challenges. So yeah. I, I uh, I, I'm, I'm intrigued and I'll, I'll probably check it out. I'll probably start with three. You, I guess you mentioned yep. to start with three I, and you can import yep. all that stuff. I would say start with three. If you buy three on the Epic game store, they, I think they give you one anyway and you can just load it in, but I would just start with three. I, the story is, is fine, but those other levels are worth playing. But um, I think you can just jump in with three and have fun. So cool. Hit Great me. game. Great series. I, you know, Travis it's... is going to be Travis is going to be Agent Forty Seven for Halloween if we get together. <laughs> Actually, that's not a bad idea. I don't. Have to work very far. If Halloween is on this year. That's what he's being. Yeah. You gave oh. me a great idea. Hey, no, that's awesome. I also saw that. I know you're going to hit it real quick. So I know you're trying to watch it, but it's still awesome. You got to play Portal Two finally. Yes, yes, I played Portal Two. Hey, come on. Yeah, come on. so I sorted my backlog because I've got a lot of games I want to play, and Hitman One and Two were on my backlog. Um, I sorted it by Metacritic. So I was like, what's the highest rated games that I own that I haven't Portal played? Portal 2 there. was like, Portal 2 was literally at the top. And I was like, yeah, I do need to play Portal 2. So, um, I put off playing that game forever because I like one a lot. And I was always like, yeah, I mean, it looks like more of one. I'm sure, you know, it does a little bit, you know, different things, but, um, yeah, I was sleeping on that game. Uh, Portal 2, it has a very different sense of humor than portal one portal one is more like deadpan and more dark humor whereas portal two um they introduce more different kind of disembodied voices than just glados and characters and it builds out like the company and it you know you you spend half the game with one companion and then there's like a flip and then you spend the other part of the game with the other companion um so it's just got more going on story-wise that was interesting um and humor wise but the uh the environment design is just top notch and the puzzle mechanics, they add so much in that game. Yeah, like the, the blue and the orange stuff, like the blue and orange and white goo is awesome. Um, they do a cube that can like bend lo the lasers, which I don't think is in the first one. I think that the first one is like 18 levels with like an extended sequence at the end. This one had like six sections of 18 levels. It was a lot beefier than I thought it would be. And yeah. I just got worried that I would get bored or I wouldn't like it, but that game stays engaging the whole yeah. way through. I love um, one. I think one's a classic, but I think I like two better. I think because two just think, throws so much. Like I love the the bouncing stuff or whatever else. I 
if, been a while if I can be it. if I can be pretentious, I think one is the game that I show someone that doesn't know anything about video games to say this is how good video games can be because it's two hours. Yeah, it's more contained and, it, and it's completely contained and yeah. perfected. It's like a, it's literally like a perfect. It, it, you yeah. you could change nothing yeah. and it's perfect. Yeah. Or Portal Two is the better video game. Like yeah. it's more bang for your buck, entertaining. It's more funny. It's got its own. It's more ambitious. I feel like it. It just really. That's kind of a hard thing to say because Portal One was a really ambitious game, but um, trying to extrapolate that out across a seven yeah. or eight hour campaign was um, really bold, and I think they succeeded. I guess it didn't sell well, so um, I don't know. But yeah. it, playing it, it made me like really think. Wow. I wish there was a Portal Three. Like I, I could, I would love to see what they would do in VR or something like that. But yeah. Maybe it's not to be. But yeah, yeah and I started the co-op missions with my sister, which I was like, yeah, like this is probably going to be like similar type things. I was like, because I did the regular ones, I probably will have an advantage. It's a whole different ball game. Like yeah. you, it's a different, it's a different everything, different levels. It's like these themed sections. Like the first section is all about momentum. The second section is all about whatever. Um, and we played two of the sections. It took us two and a half hours, and we still have four sections to go. So, um, Portal Two. If you have not played that, um, freaking go play it. You can buy it for like five dollars sometimes yeah, on sale. Nice. It's one hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, I played, uh, and you can just check this. I'm not going to talk a ton about it because you can just check out. Uh, me and Travis played some Hades. Um, that game rules. It's just a really fun yeah. rogue like that I've liked better than other roguelikes. So check out that. Just kind of scrub through that if you want. Um, and we give then, our thoughts about it there. Yeah. <laughs> and so, kind of the same with Ghost of Tsushima. I played a little bit of that and showed uh, some gameplay on that. But that game, the way it's telling its story, uh, continues to be just really cool. It plays so sharp and so fast and so. Uh, uh, coming from Cyberpunk, where I can lag out for uh, five seconds, it's just and drop to ten frames per second. This is just great. It's a constant sixty frames. I'm constantly taking pictures. I put some of those pictures on Twitter, uh, just where I've just taken some of the photo mode, and it's just ah, uh, that game continues. I continue just to look at like out at the, you know, um, the scenery and stuff on that. So Ghost of Shima freaking rolls, and that's. I've still been playing. Uh, it's funny where I'm at with the games right now. I'm just playing a bunch of stuff that I cannot finish. I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima, and I, I have to do everything. I have to find all these goofy things because I just love the world. I'm playing Cyberpunk. It's 3,000 hours long, or 200 hours if you're listening to my God Galaxy. And I'm playing Persona 5. I'll never beat these games. Go play Hitman. I beat it in five days. Or two days. I beat it in two days. And then Hades, I keep dying, and I keep going yeah. back to the beginning. So I'm stuck in Hades with games right now. Yeah. I can't beat any game except a way out. But I like that. I'm playing... I feel like Persona... When I was playing Persona 5, Persona 5 to me is an entire television series. It is not just a season of a show that you watch, and here's the different episodes. I was playing yeah. last night, and I was like, I'm in different seasons. I think I've made it to season two of maybe seven or eight seasons. So yeah. the game is ungodly big, but I'm I, I'm really liking Persona 5 as well, still playing that. But. That's one I'll play um, soon. I, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence. It is really long, and I have other backlog games for my PS5 I want to play. So I'm kind of debating when to start that one up. Hang on, my camera's messing up. Let me just video off for a second. Oh, hey. Thank you. Thank you. Hang on, guys. I don't know why this is fading. Okay, Hitman episode is going I was going out of focus, hey, and then it was hey, getting, and then it was hey, getting he's, uh, he's going incognito. Yeah, he's going incognito. He, he's, 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 yeah. he's going to come back in a suit and tie. <laughs> uh, I would suggest there starting you. Persona 5. My big fear was it was too big, but now I'm playing that game... I play the game. That's almost my Sunday little treat. I play that game almost once a week, and I'll put an hour, two hours there. That's, that's how Witcher Three was for me for a long time. It, I, it's I, it's I, probably I, going to take me a year to beat it, but I'm, yeah, I played it, it for will years. probably take a year. But uh, it's fun. Now you're playing Royal. Yes, Royal, the Royal version. Oh, so they cool. do some quality of life kind of improvements on it. But yeah, I'm gonna that's wait all. Till they, that's like, all I'm playing. Royal Two. 
Yeah, wait till they give that away. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it for me for games. Anybody, anything else? Uh, I'll mention it real fast. I played a couple hours of Dying Light. That game is really cool. Uh, we had a kid like join our instance and duplicated all these super broken weapons. So now, like, I have <laughs> eighty purple assault rifles that have like twelve thousand damage. So like, I feel like I need to nuke my file and start over on that game to have any sense of its upgrade path or tree or you how it works. You yourself. Yeah, it was fun. It's a fun co-op zombie open world traversal. It mixes Mirror's Edge with, with, I don't know, like Left 4 Dead. It's literally run around with friends and jump around and parkour on stuff. So it's a cool. fun game. I, nice. I don't have anything else to really say at this juncture. So. Cool. Uh, there were some breaking Yo. video game news. What's wrong with you, Xbox? Can we just talk for a second, Microsoft? Please Xbox... Me. Microsoft, I don't know what they were thinking. Look. They were I off the rocker. Think, here's where I think they had so much stuff going well for them. You know, and, and I'm glad that they... So what ended up happening is Xbox Live came out, Xbox came out and said, Hey, we are changing our pricing structure for Xbox Gold. Just the Gold platform. And then what it's going to look like is, basically, if you wanted a whole year to play any online game, you need to pay $60 a month. No, sixty dollars every six months. Every six months. Every six months. I'm yeah. sorry. Every six months. So it eventually come out to like hundred twenty dollars a year, which is so double. Insane. Double insane. what the <laughs> So people just said, "What in the world is going on? Like, why? Why the sudden flip? Why all this?" And then they come back out four hours later and say, "Hey guys, just kidding. We recognize. We he- hey, the famous we hear PR you. word. We yeah. hear you. We hear we, you. We know what you want. <clears throat> I know what they were doing." They were testing the market. And no, they could care less about Xbox Live. I know what they were doing. What are they doing? Travis is going to listen. They are 100% in the bucket of getting more Game Pass subscribers. 100%. Oh, I, th- I think what it is, though, is so, like... Go ahead. Well, what I'm going to say is, and this is basically, this is what it was. Xbox Live costs $60 a year. Okay. What they want people to do is they don't want people to just have Xbox Live. They want people to have Game Pass. So they have a week, a monthly subscription called Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Yep. That gives you Game Pass and Xbox Live. So what they did was they made the cost of Xbox Live alone just a little bit under the cost of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate with the hopes that people would stop and say, well, if I got to pay this for live, I might as well pay this for Game Pass Ultimate because then I get live plus all these games. And there is a lot of marketing out there that's pushing Game Pass Ultimate now that kind of indicates that that was their plan. They just totally botched they just totally botched it. And and the bottom line is is that Xbox Live it, it shouldn't be a paid service. Yeah. It's not you shouldn't have to pay money to play a game but, online. Well, I think the craziest thing about this was... That, 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 that was their angle. They wanted so, to make the value more talk, in favor of but, having games. They, what was about crazy that, about this was they... There's been increases to, like, PlayStation Live or prices or whatever Why by, like, ten, by, like, $10. And I think if they, if, they, crazy. if they did $10, people would be mad, but they'd probably still pay it. You know what I mean? Like, they would just yeah. put over it. But to double it... Yeah. Who would I'd like to be yeah. a fly on that wall in that meeting? Someone to who signed off on that because it's, just, it's uh, not hard. It's not a hard concept. Ultimate's only fifteen dollars a month if you do the monthly idea of it. Really, simply say, hey guys, we're bumping the price. X, we're, we're dissolving our Xbox Live program, and it's all now an Xbox Game Pass. Here's the new price for our subscriptions. Here you go. And yeah. guess what happens? Oh, it's only an extra six dollars a month. Or they Instead, they tried to rig the system to make people not want Xbox Live. Yeah, it was no, it's just, no it's just thinking was sense. involved on that. No thought process. I I'm glad know. they backtracked because uh, Xbox. I will say this: their launch has been well. They've done a great job with their launch. Uh, people are wanting their systems. People are wanting their machines. It's everything that they want right now. The last thing you want to do is start booting people off your platform because you, you sour can't the mood. Play, yeah. So you know that wasn't really good um, to hear. 
I think what else is awesome is EA lost Star Wars exclusive rights and Lucasfilm's rights. Now people games. can stop making experiences and make games, Star Wars games. I, now I, <laughs> that's funny. I, that's 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 a funny. No one. true. Um, no more Darth think, Vader experience. I think this was a long time coming. I think the only game that actually came out of that whole there's two games that came out and one of them took a whole like four years to get to the point where it is now. Um, and the two games were this, Star Wars Fallen Order, um, great game, it was a good time, still buggy at launch, but still a great game, and then Star Wars Battlefront 2 was a complete chaotic mess for two years. Did you play Squadrons? Um, uh, I did, it sucks. Oh, I've heard, and everybody I've talked to say they loved it. Terrible, terrible game. I, I refunded, I, okay, first off, I'm, about, I'm about to buy it, it looks do awesome. Not, Stop listen them. to me, Stop I do them. not buy it, I bought it, so you know I bought it, I bought it for the VR capabilities, and let me say this. The non-VR portion, okay, is a VR port, if that makes any sense. No, it doesn't. Okay, so I want you to imagine playing this game in VR, okay. and then imagine them, them just taking that game and saying, on a computer screen, here it is. So basically what they've done is they completely broke in both ends of the game. It does not run well in VR at all. You have to run play well. What do you mean run well? I have to play with keyboard and mouse while my VR headset's on. Uh, none of this compats with anything. I've been doing a lot of research on this game, and Sam there's, has put like 100 hours. He loves there it. There is no motion control capabilities. What? You have to no use a, everybody uses a flight stick. They use flight sticks on that game. Okay, I don't have a flight stick, so why? Like, I mean, it's a flying simulator. Everybody uses uh, a flight no, stick. No, buzz off. Okay. So then <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, so I was using keyboard and mouse, own. and then I, I tried using a uh, controller. On top of that, the flying mechanics, I feel like Star Wars Battlefront 2 is way better in the flying mechanics than Squadrons. Here's what I'll say. Travis, buy it and play for an hour and then return it because it's not good. <laughs> it's really not. You will well, know it in the first I, hour. I mean, I haven't played it so I can't speak to it, but I've been watching a lot of like YouTube videos and I got a lot of friends that play it and have really loved it. I, I hated it. I was so hyped about it. And then I bought it, and I was like, this sucks, but... Well, another man's trash to another man's treasure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just... I'm just. So, yeah, we're, we're back on track. We're going to get some new Star Wars from other studios. I love, so. I love how this just randomly happened, because they announced that they have a new division at Lucasfilm called Lucasfilm Games, which it was Lucas arts when I was a kid, but whatever Lucasfilm games, Lucasfilm games. I don't know. Say that whatever. Five fast. So when they announced that, I was like, well, what are they going to do? Work for EA because EA has got the license. And then they were like, yeah, well we're working with Bethesda to make an Indiana Jones game. And I was like, <laughs> okay, well that's good news. Like that means other companies can work on this stuff, right? It's not just EA. Maybe like because Indiana Jones is also a Lucasfilm thing. So I was like, I was like, this is good. This means they're trying to work with other people to see what else is out there. Maybe one day we'll get a different Star Wars game. And then the next day they just blew the lid off it. They're like, yeah, Ubisoft's making an open world game. And yeah, I mean, EA will still work with them, but pff, it's not exclusive. And I was like, wow, like that escalated quickly. Even EA posted like one. We love Star Wars. Yeah, <laughs> we're proud of the Star Wars games we make. Three, you know. We'll continue making Star Wars games for the droid in our game is still the cutest droid. Like yeah, I was just like, yeah, I was like, man, uh, that seems like an ugly was, divorce there. Um, yeah, it, there. it was it was bound to happen. I'm not surprised. And hopefully sooner or later we see football and get away from EA. Well, yeah, that's the other thing. Now we've got one of my beloved franchises or beloved properties not wrapped up around the EA throne. I will say, though. Uh, I also saw today that Jason Schreier confirmed that somebody is working on a Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic reimagining, um, but it's not Bioware or EA. It's somebody else. And I, I read a report that not the people dog. that it is, <laughs> I, I read that the people that it is, they're known, but they're not a household name, and it would surprise a lot of people. CG I don't know what Project to make of any Red. of that. CJ Project Red. Hey guys, well, they're, they're a household on. name at this point. I would say, although if I could pick anybody, I would pick them. What they've done with Cyberpunk, imagining them making a Star Wars city, and also they've got a good sense for, sorry, how to roll stats into like an action RPG realm. Yeah, I would say give it to CD Project Red, but um, that kind of was weird to me. I was like, well, maybe it's somebody that doesn't normally uh, work on RPGs or something, but yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I think it's good news. I think St- Star Wars is is one of those properties that there's enough people with good ideas out there that they should never be locked down to one publisher. They don't have to be, so why would they be? Yeah. I think that their thought with EA was, if we're only working with one publisher, then we only got to work with one marketing firm. One we only got to work with one. All, yeah. Yep. We can basically like preload our assets into their one engine, and then they can just use the same assets across all the games. But that kind of that's not conducive to good storytelling, right? Like Lucas Arts back in the day, like they were working with Bioware, who was this upstart team, and Bioware is like, can we just make an RPG like three thousand years earlier? And they're like, sure, go for it. And they made Kotor, and then they're working with Pandemic, and they're making the Battlefront games, and like Star Wars games were way more experimental back then. And I, I think that hopefully we're going back to that. Yeah, way. yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens. Um, the only thing I don't know about, which you guys are talking about, Vic, Viscari- Vicarious Visions. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Well, yeah, this is another news story. Yeah. So what's okay? What, someone to explain to you, Zach. Travis, okay, what's going so on here? so Vicarious Visions has been around a long time. Like they're not like a recently. They made the video. Game Boy Advance Crash Bandicoot games. I liked. Oh, yeah. I like one of those. It, I didn't get to play the other. They are they are owned by Activision for a while. They've been around since I was a kid. Um, most recently, they're known for three things. Number one, when Bungie was partnered with Activision, Vicarious Visions was their primary support studio. And Vicarious Visions actually made two of the DLCs for Destiny 2. They made the Warmind DLC, and they helped a lot on the Forsaken DLC. Mm. So Vicarious Visions was very involved with the the later parts of Destiny 2 to make that the game. And that they're a game. subsidiary of Activision, right? Activision, yeah. Man, yeah. they were a big so Game Boy. They producer. made they made the Crash Bandicoot Insane trilogy. So we've yep. gushed yeah. about that on this. They yep. remade those from the ground up and kept the feel. And most recently, they made the Tony Hawk Pro Skater one and, one two, and two. Yeah, I forgot they did year. the CTR. Uh, Man, yeah. they they did so much. Yeah, it crashed Team Racing. Yeah. And so the news is is that Activision has announced that they are disbanding Vicarious Visions. It no longer exists, and they are moving all of those resources over to Blizzard to work on Blizzard games exclusively. So, and and so that really sucks. One, like if they were to still be Vicarious Visions, but the idea was that they were going to, okay, you've worked on the Activision side of the house. Now you're going to more help the Blizzard side of the house. Even then it wouldn't be so bad. They are gutting that team. Like they will no longer be a team. And to me, that is so, I don't know how that is. So maybe that, maybe there's crap there. There's bad stuff there and that needed to happen. But yeah, we don't know that the, you would never know from their output that that's the case because maybe they're just on a 10 year plan and they'll be back after I just think that's the saddest thing when you build up a really good company and they're really good at making games and you tear them apart. I will say the rumor is, is those resources are going to go towards making a Diablo two remaster. So vicarious visions has mostly been making remasters. Now they'll go to blizzard and start remastering blizzard games. I think it's fine, but to me it would be like if you, bought blue point by from ea and they dismantled blue point and said yeah. now you work for ea remaking i don't know like ea games yeah. it would be like this sucks man this is terrible so i That's i think it's sad uh i didn't play tony hawk but uh the people that dug that seem to really dig it a lot i saw some people gave it game of the year stuff like people love that game so yeah that's crazy i mean i it's not oh. like Blizzard does not, if I'll say this, does not push out title after title. Um, but no, to get they don't. Two, to get 200 employees of a company that was pushing out roughly recently three to four games a year, um, who knows? Maybe. What are they called now? Are they called Blizzard Activision, Activision Blizzard? Uh, it's a it's subsidiary. Activision Blizzard. Yeah, it's a subsidiary, if I remember correctly. Here's the thing we need to do to Activision Blizzard. We should do the opposite of what happened to GameStop stock. We should... Short the stock. Short. We should we should destroy the stock of them. But what yeah, happened yeah. was the opposite. Right. GameStop. Uh, GameStop stock exploded. Um, which James, my boys own it. GameStop's been uh, in the news of just okay, rumblings so, of like how are they going to change their business in the, this so, new digital like landscape and back and forth. Are they shutting stuff down? COVID right, stuff so, happened. So, so are you guys really familiar with the inner workings of how this works? Of what works? 
like how the stock and what's going on. Yeah, with I was EA, about to explain. With I, I was about okay, to explain cool. what they were doing. Okay. So what had happened, uh, and you can jump in here, but um, there was a kind of a research firm or something that, uh, if you go on Wall Street Bets on Reddit, um, uh, take all your life, put your life savings in whatever they say to do. Uh, don't do that. But um, this research firm basically said like, ah, GameStop and had some thoughts about GameStop about like, hey, don't do this or I don't know the inner workings of what happened there. But so, so basically how it works is is there are people at the top of the food chain. They have enough they have enough volume that when a stock is going down and yeah. they know it's going down, they can encourage people not to buy it and they yeah. have a way of making money from it going down. Yeah. So they were basically controlling the narrative and encourage people not to do something that that would make them make some money. Yeah. And Wall Street Bet said, I don't want to do that. And they yep. memed their way into getting what they wanted. And the stock actually exploded uh, yeah. for GameStop. So, it went from 30 up to 150. <laughs> which is insane. If you had for GameStop a, for stock. For open oh trading Scott stock to jump up that many points. Like that's Tesla level and, and growth. Cri- around, around Christmas, when they were really low, it was down to like six bucks or something like that. It was I looked bad. at it and I was like, you know, Reggie's over there. I was like, it seems like with this Xbox partnership, like they could do so. I thought about buying four or five stocks. Just see, yeah. it was like, it's six yeah. bucks. What could go wrong? Dude, you would have been, I would have literally, I would literally have a thousand dollars right now if I had done it. Yeah. But that ship is sailed. So now I'm only going to take my advice from wall street bets, whatever they're doing, I'm buying, you know? Yeah. Yep. That so was, yeah. that was yeah, the that lesson was... learned there. Uh, yeah, I love that idea that like Reddit memers can like in the markets to their will. <laughs> That's hilarious. That shows how goofy our economy though is as well. Like it it's held together. Of, it, it's held together by paperclip and glue and, it is. and stuff. So it, is. it really is. Yeah, it's, um, but it it was a joy though. It's it's just it's really is a joy to experience that. Um, yeah, TV shows you got stuff. What you guys been checking out? I've been watching something so good. I'm gonna let somebody else speak about their TV. Okay. Um, I what have I watched. I have watched. I, I'll, I'll speed run my three. All right, speed the run. The first one is this. I've watched Yashihime. I don't know if I mentioned this yet. It's a continuation of the anime uh, Inuyasha. Yeah. Um, it has been really, really good so far. Um, I have enjoyed it so far. They only have 24 episodes for season one. I'm scared we're not going to get a season two, just because of um. The issue that they're having, there's no manga running with it. So the writing process and everything else, that it takes a lot longer. Um, and I just don't know if they're going to pick up a season two. I hope they do, because I have enjoyed it. Um, just because it's... To watch Inuyasha and watch it something that I watched growing up, and then finish it, and then, like, they all... They just started a story about their, them, like, after life. Mm. Yeah, I was, all, I was all for it. I'm watching Boruto. I'm already watching Boruto. So it just goes right. You're watching all the kids of the, yeah. the characters from the old animes you watch. I'm watching my anime. Uh, the kids, I, the anime I watched when I was kids, I'm watching it grow up in front of my eyes. It's wow. really beautiful. Um, I am watching Boruto. I'm almost caught up again. Um, it's been really good, especially like, I think in the middle part, it kind of sucked. It kind of started to drag and I can see why people hated it. But right now, oh. Boruto so, is back. It's not even like. They're just there's a lot of moving pieces moving around and I have so many questions and I love when an anime does that I love when an anime leaves me asking like really really complicated questions and my hope is I just get answers like because there's no I'm caught up like yeah. I have no other episodes to watch um, they're already at like 170 episodes jeez um, yeah so they're 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 doing their job they're punching them out so Boruto has been great uh, One Punch dubbed season two came out oh nice and Boy, is it good! I like love, I love the English dub voices in One Punch Man. Um, it, they are so good. It's, I, it's very rarely that I feel like the the dub will beat the sub, but the say Tom, uh, his voice is so much better, and it's so much more funnier when he says his jokes. Um, so I just, I really like One Punch Man. If you guys are not watching One Punch Man, you need to go check that out. That's cool. Um, it's Hold a the pilot. Really yeah, good. I don't. I'm surprised, Travis. You haven't like just committed a little extra. Money I like that. It. I like that first season, and then I was worried because they went to a different studio for the yeah. next season. But it sounds like you enjoy it, so that's cool. Yeah, it like I, worked out. You can definitely tell the difference in like animators um, and animations when that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it's still awesome. 
still yeah. enjoy it. Cool. Uh, I have been watching some of the best television I've watched in years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right before this podcast, I finished the latest episode. Episode 7 of the final season of Attack on Titan. This show has moments every season. I would say one to three where your jaw hits the floor and you're like, yes, like, oh my gosh, like you're just freaking out. (laughs) This season, every episode has made my jaw hit the floor. Like almost every, after like, like three episodes in, I was like, bam, bam, bam. Like I'm not even towards the end. I'm not even close to the halfway point. Uh, Or actually I think it's 16 episodes. So I'm almost halfway uh, of uh, this final season, but so freaking good. I was like giggling to myself just now watching this last one. But that's how it was the last episode and the episode before that because the stuff they're doing. And I wish I could say more, but I would actually spoil some stuff if I mentioned what I want to mention to you guys. But I'm just like you just just bursting at the same time. Are these 10 episode seasons? Um, They might be more, but each episode is like 25 minutes. They're very short episodes. But and... it's not 24 episode seasons. Um, I can't remember if it is the, you'll blow through the show if you start it because it's very short. I, I, I think they're 20 episode seasons, maybe some of them, but then like this one is 16 to, to finish it out. I think the first one's only 14 or 15 or something, but, yeah. but there's four seasons total. That's it. That's all they're doing. But it reminds me of game of Thrones in the way that like payoff stuff, but I, I, this show is probably going to take my number three spot of animes because it is just so ungodly good. I'm laughing and giggling and just pumping my fists in the air, like seeing some of the stuff they're pulling off. Like it's yeah. so freaking cool. But uh, I want to say more, but I would actually spoil. Like there's a comparison I want to make and something else I want to say, but I would spoil a lot if I said. Anything. Can you say the comparison at all? No, no, I can't. I, I'm dying to. You guys just have to watch it, and then we'd be able to talk a little bit more. But oh, is it like it totally yeah. changes your? It would change if you said what it is. It would change my perception of everything going into it. Uh, yes, but I don't want to tell you. Like it is such a good payoff that I don't want to compare it. Like I, I would rather okay. you play, and then we talk about it, but or not play it, but watch it. But okay, Attack on Titan. I'm just could not give it enough praise. Got to check that out. And that. Is TV for January 2021. I started Bojack Horseman. Ooh, Ooh I've heard okay. good things about that actually. It was funny. I watched the first episode. I've heard. I heard it was. Uh, it was kind of funny. My little brother yeah, actually I, likes it a lot. I was enjoying it. It was funny. It's got Will Arnett as as the horse. Funny. Nice. So, it's more. It's got more serious beats than I would have thought. So yeah, it's. Can we good. get an update? And Jacob might want to know this as well. Can we get a leftovers update from Travis? Where are we where are we looking? Because in June of 2020, I think a bet was made to watch that, and he completed Last of Us One and Last of Us Two in the time frame to finish a three season, thirty episode show. Where are we at? I haven't had time. <laughs> <laughs> Travis, I feel like at this point you owe me something. Yeah, but... Yeah, he's a, you're going to have to buy him something now. I will admit, I l- I've let this one get away from me. <laughs> and I think the people that made the show let it get away from him, too. <laughs> I've let it get away from me, but I did ask my wife. I said, she did, for the record, she doesn't like it either. So her and I have trouble watching things we do like in sync okay. and getting the time to watch it. So she doesn't like this show. Okay, confirm. I've, I have, to my credit, I'm not going to blame it on her, but to my credit, there have been three times or four times I've said, hey, do you want to watch this? And the answer has never been yes. So, again, I'm not blaming her. You know, I'm on my, on my own person. But, you know, football season's winding down. Okay. You know, yeah. my Sundays, you know, while they've just been, you know, Crazy busy, you know, and with quarantine. Hitman and Destiny. You know, I, I, I am I actually almost done with Hitman. I'm not playing Destiny anymore. Okay. Um, I will finish season one of The Leftovers before the next podcast. We'll have a season one review in February. And then I will finish each subsequent season by the next podcast. 
Okay, don't let these statements age like my COVID response in January. Right? This is I <laughs> don't don't have he's me. He's not gonna do. It. He's not gonna happen. <laughs> I don't know why we're sitting here acting like he's gonna do. Don't, it. don't have me in January 2022. Have we watched leftovers yet? It's February awesome. is my leftovers part one review. March leftovers part two review. In April, this is the final season. Leftovers part three review. Wow. Look forward to that. Awesome. I can't wait. That's exciting to know. That's all I have to say. That's all he has to, that's his, that's his uh, mic drop moment. It is his mic drop moment. That's cool. Awesome. Uh, I have watched a couple movies. Have you guys seen anything? Any movies? I'm season? only doing all that because Jacob gave Last of Us 2 his game of the year. If he, yeah, I... he would have said it was second. Because Leftovers went for... Or, Last of Us went for him as a terrible game to oh. the best game of the year. Maybe there is some poetry to that. Maybe. Leftovers are going to be your favorite show. The difference is Jacob hadn't played the game. <laughs> well, you, have, well, you haven't watched the show. I've watched five stinkers of that show. But I'm, it I'm still saying. remains to be seen what I'm they will saying. do. Maybe at the end of the first season of Leftovers, they'll take off like a Matrix headset and say, Wow, that was a weird dream, and then like a new show will start. So that's my hope at this point. I I'm am hoping. so. When you get to season three, you're going to be kicking yourself so freaking hard. I just know it. When you're in season three, you're be like, "Oh my gosh, what have I done?" I can't wait for that moment. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. All I'm, right. I'm, I'm excited to hear you talk about it finally. You know, uh, if, no, if, yeah, if no GameStop, movies on my end. If GameStop stock can go up, I can watch the left. So Leftovers is a life-changing show, and I've watched some life-changing movies this month. I went back-to-back -back on movies that make you question your life and make you look at your life and go, what, what are you doing with your freaking life? Those two movies are, with my dual review for Soul from Pixar and Akira Kurosawa's Kurosawa's Akiru. They're very similar. So, Soul, did anyone else watch Soul? I'm meaning to. Jess and I want to watch it. Okay, seven. this will be a spoiler-free review, but that the whole premise of that movie, um, am I allowed to tell, say the premise of the movie? You want to go and... Uh, yeah, you can say... I, okay. I think I'm vaguely familiar. I think that it... Go ahead. Okay, so the premise of the movie is there's this guy, his dream is to... Uh, get into he wants to be a jazz player. That's all that's like his big dream thing to do. The moment he gets like an audition at this like well respected club, this player that I, I think he knew or something. So he gets that, he walks across the street and he dies. There, he, he actually passes away. So the movie, without going so much into it, is about like him getting back. How does he get back into his body? He goes in the soul form. And it's for all the Pixar films I've ever seen, this is the like the most galaxy brain Pixar film. because Even it, more than Inside Out? Because Inside yes. Out got pretty... Inside Out dealt with emotions, but I will say that this is the most... Inside Out had like... How can I say this? All the Pixar films, kids and adults can enjoy this. This is the first yeah. one where I'm like, okay, there there is one thing they play with in here that's like for kids. But I almost felt like, more for adults. This is almost for more for adults. To wow. um and I would almost say that's like part of a full or part of like, hey, it's almost like the ambition of a last of us or a death stranding for like animated films. They just really um, kind of go for that. Not to say that kids won't enjoy oh. this, but I think it's... I was sitting there going, like, would kids get some of... Like, does this have enough or whatever? But yeah. um, I loved the way they viewed this kind of afterlife thing and the art style that they play with, like, makes sense from, like, a, kind of an artistic standpoint. It's like, oh, this is fun that they did that uh, without spoiling it. But they go into certain art styles and certain things that they do. It's like, oh, that's, that's absolutely what they should have done. So... Um, not my favorite Pixar film, but it's it made me tear up. I think all Pixar films have this kind of formula that they know how to make the watershed moments. Everything, yeah. like all these Pixar films, know how to make you tear up, and this one did uh, for me as well. But I've uh, heard. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say that this um, it did a good job of like it just makes you like hey, think about your life and 
see what's important. Somebody about. said that this movie, for the first however long, you think you know what it's doing. Mm-hmm. And then, like, you think you know what the the moral of the story is. Yeah. And yeah. then in the back third, it shifts. And it's like, oh, this is about something, like, different. Yes. Like, yeah, there, there's a little shift. I've heard multiple people say that. Like, you're going to think once they get on to the afterlife stuff. And, like, you're going to think, like, oh, yeah, this is a good message about this. And then it's like, oh, whoa, this is, like, about yeah. something much different. Yeah, so I definitely enjoyed it. Um, but I don't know if I... I had had this movie on my watch list for a while. So Ikiru is about a man that... Um, he wants to be a jazz musician. He wants to be a jazz musician in ancient Japan. No. Uh, it happens. It happens. Uh, it takes place in the 50s. And the settings aren't really important. But he works in this kind of... He works for the city government. Like this bureaucracy and all this stuff. And he finds out that he has stomach cancer. And... Finding that out, all he's done is work at this place. These people keep coming into the thing. It's like, okay, you need to talk to actually the park division. Okay, you need to, they're all one, like these people keep coming in from the city and they're like, can you fix this in our city? Can you fix this in our like town? Like we need a park, we need this. And they all keep like shoving it off. Like, oh, you need to go talk to them and nobody does anything. It's all like piles and piles of bureaucracy and nobody cares about the, the citizens. And he's part of this kind of like cog in the wheel. So when he gets that, um, uh, diagnosis like this is what's happening to him he learns like he only has so much long to live and stuff that like he tries to discover like what have I done with my life and it's like kind of that spiral of like he meets these characters and he kind of like lives his life for the first time so between wow. that and soul and stuff it just uh, I, I, I tend to get in moods but I kind of knew that this movie was on my watch list and I was like I'm going to watch this with soul so I, I, did a jo- I, I, I did a Joker, Taxi Driver, uh, Double Feature, and now I did a Soul and a Kira. If you want to get into, like, what am I doing with my freaking life and what am I doing? Um, I want to watch those. Those both sound good. And then I finally watched a movie called They Shall Not Grow Old. And this is, that is a, the footage of World War II? World War I. Uh, Peter War Jackson War. did this. And I, I remember being kind of hyped for it. Like, I wanted to check this out. And uh, they, I just totally forgot about it. I was like, oh, I need to watch that. Cause it's, uh, I, it, I have it on my Plex and I've been meaning to watch one it. One that's coming out this year, 2021, is he did, Peter Jackson did a Beatles documentary. So I, when oh, I really? saw that that was coming out, they mentioned this and I was like, I forgot about this movie. So watch They Shall Not Grow Old. They take old footage from World War One, And I'm seeing this more, people are getting this new AI, like there's new technology to recover this old footage and up the frame rate they've upped it to, they've remastered world war one they've made it 60 frames per second i can't even tell you how they're doing this like the technology is just so galaxy brain they're taking 24 frames per second footage and upping to 60 frames like stuff from the 1800s they're doing that with and you guys have to check that out it's unbelievable that so, sounds wild so in this they color the footage they fix they they touch up the footage and it's it's very Interesting to see, and the whole movie is just stories. It's them talking about they the process. voices too. Yeah, they added voices and stuff to like. Um, I heard they brought in basically because like in a lot of that footage, it'll be like of a group of guys like sitting at a table. Yeah, and they brought in lip readers to look and yes. see what they were saying. Yes, and then they wrote down what the people were saying, and then they had voice actors redo the voices. Yeah. So you'll be looking at a scene and it looks like it's fully audio too. Like you're hearing yes. what all the guys are talking about at the table. Yeah. So there's like some really cool parts when they kind of like let that go and they do longer stretches of that. Cause that, t- that is time intensive along with the AI I think I believe like you have to do some frame by frame stuff to that, but wow. uh, very, just a uh, very condensed, like I think it's an hour and a half hour, 40 minutes of just kind of a look at world war one. So yeah, Peter Jackson. The good. second thing kind of sold me too. I kind of want to see that. Yeah, so uh, wild, cool stuff, cool stuff happening in the movie world. AIs, deep fakes. Somebody's going to deep fake us and make us say something crazy. That would be terrible. Like earlier, that Larry King thing. I didn't. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. That was a deep fake. I'm going to deep fake me and say the leftovers is the best show of the decade. Or something. Somebody deep fake that. Yeah. It, it would it would help you. Yeah, it would. But uh, yeah. thank you for joining us. Oh, I also put out um, I put out a uh, I, I did a PSA unboxing. 
I spent oh yeah I spent one hundred sixty dollars on <laughs> getting my cards graded. I sent old Pokemon cards, so you can check out that video on the channel. Was it worth it? Yes, I think so. Um, nice. It definitely raised the value of what those, you know, you can tell like here is the quality for sure what these cards are. Yeah. But check it out. There's a little surprise in there. I was shocked at one of those because um, I was looking for Lowe's uh, ratings on the PSA scale, but one of them was not. I was surprised. So it was a high rating. Yeah, it was a high rating. Yeah, I was not yeah. expecting. You so don't want a high rating? No, you do want a high rating. But yeah, I was expecting low ratings because the cards have just been sitting in a freaking my binder for like since I was a kid. But um. I wasn't really worried about getting PSA graded back then, but check that out on the channel. Uh, there's more co more cool stuff to come. I've been uh, kind of kind of here and there putting out dweebs, more dweeb stuff. That's coming to the channel. More music videos, skits, and stuff like that. Kind of spliced out from that. I'm excited to finally get some of that stuff on there. I was rewatching that stuff, and I'm still very proud of all that. And it's great just, stuff. It's, it's great work. Joy. It's fun stuff. And we all look very different. Like, I look at myself, yeah. I don't even know who I am. I'm looking at, it's yeah. not even that long ago. It's, I have people wow. who go back and watch the episode with me, and yeah. they laugh at it, and they're like, man, it, you look night and day different. Yeah, yeah. it is so different. It's, it's crazy. So, I uh, look forward to that. But thank you for joining us for the first podcast of 2021. Any final messages that you guys have? Any final Travis, watch the dang leftovers. Stop yeah. yeah, pray for me. Pray for me, for me as I watch. Dude. Pray for me as I watch this show. Yeah. <laughs> good thoughts and, and prayers for him. Love good vibes show. and good vibes. Yeah, good vibes only. Good F vibes in the only. chat. Press yeah. F in the chat yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah. All also, right. Also, for me, I was in the Capitol. I'm getting some paperwork. People are showing up at my door, and I don't know what all that's about. So. Well, that's because you made a Larry King. Why didn't we record our last podcast from the Capitol? That would have. I tried to, and something was going on a couple days ago. I couldn't get close. I tried, our, but our tinfoil hats weren't on time. <laughs> I couldn't. I tried, and all right. Well, we just killed a Democrat. <laughs> all righty, as they say, peace.